Hello, incredible humans. Ah, welcome to week seven. How did you go last week with the self love week? What did you experience? What did you notice? What, what came up for you? So as many of you know, um, throughout this program, I've actually rewritten this and recreated this again for you all. Um, it used to be in many chat and I would deliver it another way. And then I decided I'd morph it and create it into this um, classroom situation that you see with the unit. So I hope that it's working for you. And as always, I appreciate all feedback and thoughts and, and whatnot as you go through the process. Um, this week's exciting. This week's a big week. And for those of you who have done my program before, you'll see that I've added oh, so much more content to the program. And I guarantee you, I will end up redoing everything again in the near future. And you will all get access to the revised version because it's just in me to continue to give you guys, you guys have invested at some point into this program and I'm always here for you. And, and for me, seeing you all achieve your incredible greatness and, and understand your human potential is my, my greatest desire. And uh, we all go through life and we all have stuff that happens and we all uh, fall off the bandwagon. I'm a human too. I do the same thing. And I want you all to know that this is created so you can always come back. You can always come back and start again. You can always come back and revise everything. And so this week I wanted to go back into a deeper aspect of stress and talk a little bit more towards the different health types and share with you a cool presentation that I've created, uh, hopefully inducing a, a wonderful conversation around you and who you are and what you stand for and all the rest of it. And um, hopefully you can understand more of each other as well. So week seven, I'm going to create the presentation right right so week seven this week we are covering your wins so welcome what have you guys experienced this last week what has come up for you what have you noticed what are the things that have been hard for you what what came up for you in it being hard like did everything get busy did someone get ill did someone take up too much of your time did everything get thrown off um, kilter because something happened unexpectedly. How did you manage the situation? What are you noticing? Are your reoccurring situations, thoughts, and, and reactions to things? Um, how does that make you feel? What is your reaction with it? Is it is it eating? Is it drinking? Is it being aggressive and lashing out? Is it what are the things that this is all about? Awareness, guys. No one's judging. No one's perfect. No one's right. No one's wrong. It's really about awareness of who you are and how you generally show up in things. So. What's been your, your, your not so good wins or the wins would still be classed as awareness. So what have you been aware about? What have you wanted? Have you food prepped? Have you gone through and read through all the aspects of your profile or another aspect of your profile? And have you found some statements that really stand out to you? What are some statements in this week's priority that have really stood out for you? Uh, and also, yes, I might, might, might note right now. Yes. Um, as we go through, this is week seven, but some of the documents will say week five because I've extended this program and added in some extra pieces, some extra weeks off um, to give you guys a little more of what I've been learning. And, and as this year goes on, I guarantee you there will be a bucket load more awesomeness within this program. So stress management is something we're going to go into severely here. And then we're going to go into a bit of a personal identity worksheet, which is a bit of homework for y'all that I would like you to share with the group. So just being hovered by a mosquito sorry guys okay so <clears throat> stress management let's talk about this this is a, a full-on component and it can consume some people's lives the epigenetic of stress and the relationships with self and others how you act towards other people and how they receive your information is going to be different for everyone the latest in science and epigenetics tells us that, tells us that these differences are built into our genes and getting it wrong can lead to increased stress and decreased resilience. But first we need to understand who you are and how your biology contributes. We need to understand your biology in order to understand who you are as a person and what is going to stress you that might not stress the person next to you. What can you do to reduce your stress that might not have the same effect on the person next to you? If you are in control of your stress, then what effect can it have on the person next to you your natural strength and your vulnerabilities can all be enhanced and transformed through a greater understanding of the generic genetic blueprint in your cells, the influence they have on your behavior, 
the influence they have on the behavior of those around you. And um, we are going to go through a little bit of under, the underpinning science of genetics and the personalities and how they most, or how they make the most of yours and bring out the best in others. That is my goal. So. Uh, stress. Here we go. Sorry, I've just had something. I've got a, a mosquito chasing me down. So stress is not always as bad as long as we have the appropriate environment around us as well as, oh, sorry, sorry. Blah, blah, blah. Stress is not always bad. As long as we have the appropriate environment around us, it is all well. As in stress in the workplace is endured because having a job and performing things at work is necessary to our survival. It's how we get paid. So these sorts of things, these sorts of stresses can really actually be important. Same as, um, for instance, your children. The stress of your children is important. It is necessary to the growth development and the nurturing of the child, of the human being that you are nurturing into this world. So stresses like that are necessary, are important, are valid, are always going to be in and around us because they are necessary for our survival or our offspring's survival. I like this meme. Is stress bad? Not always stress can be great and it could motivate you to get us to focus and accomplish great things like making desserts. Who else procrastinates? Oh my gosh, I procrastinate, I stress bake. But it's also great because when I know that I'm doing that, like when I'm aware, when I'm making this food, I really, 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 really want you guys to step into this space and understand there's no judgment. There's no point criticizing and judging yourself. There's enough of that going on in the world. I really, really would love for you guys to understand we need to take away the judgment and take away the stress and the pressure upon ourselves and just know that sometimes you're going to do things as a reaction. Become aware of the reaction. Become aware of the behavior of which you keep playing out as a coping mechanism, as an ability to get through your day or avoid sitting in the feelings. And what I mean by this is everyone is different. Everyone is really, really different. I really want to really hash that out. But when we judge these things and when we make them wrong, when we put a negative connotation or um, guilt around these things, we actually make them amplified. We then end up in this whirlwind cluster of chaos that is going to take you down. So what I want you guys to do is be aware when you're stressed, what are your natural reactions to stress? What do you do as a coping mechanism and a way of just getting through it? Just keep chugging on or completely avoiding the situation altogether. Quite often what we need to do is be real about ourselves and go, right, I'm choosing to eat this excess bowl of chocolate chia seed pudding at a stupid o'clock because I'm feeling emotions and I don't want to feel them anymore. So I'm going to submerge them under a beautiful pile of lovely food that if you're anything like me, it's normally quite healthy. So then I get to sit there and go, right, so what am I actually pushing away? And it's not going to kill me not to have it. So what if I don't choose to have it right now? What if I choose to sit here in these emotions and actually just feel what the heck is sitting below it? And for me, it was always loneliness. It was always fear of being alone. It was always fear of not being good enough, fear of not being wanted, fear of not being enough, fear of being too much. You know, all of these things were sitting there for me that I kept choosing to eat my way through. So I'd be curious, what is it for you? What do you do? What is your coping mechanism? And what do you actually, I challenge you, instead of succumbing to the reaction, sit with it. What is actually sitting underneath that emotion or reaction? Sorry. Now, causes of stress. So as you can see, everyone's causes of stress are different for each person, but the most common ones that we generally see is lack of control, lack of time, lack of honesty, communication, lack of or too much, financial stresses, lack of physical activity, crises and emergencies, no downtime, shift work, poor sleep and sleep interruptions, structural changes, someone taking the rug out from underneath you or divorcing or these sorts of things, long hours at work, long hours with children, high expectations on you and by other people, that you are not in control of or that you've actually placed upon yourself. Hello, narcissists, <laughs> inner narcissists. Things also like, and something a big stress that people don't realize is things like air conditioning and the air temperature. 
if you're an ectomorph and you're sitting under the air conditioning, you're going to be stressed. You're going to be so stressed without even realizing it. If you're an endomorph and you're sitting in like no airflow and it's like hot and humid, you're going to be stressed and more reactive. Things like noises and distractions, even lighting can be a total chaotic moment for people without them even realizing what it actually is. And to top it off, the other causes of stress are poor nutrition, lack of exercise, lack of self-worth, poor mental health, and poor relationship situations. All these all these things are tangible stresses in your life and they will affect your biology. And this is what within PH360 and within the platform, within this program, I really hope to show you guys what the triggers are, what's sitting in there and get you to really reflect upon life and how you're existing in this point in time. And what are the things that you can see have been getting you to where you are, but are no longer serving you that we can really look at and look to shift. So there's two categories of stress. The background stress, which is persistent. This is like the kids, mom, 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 or your boss. Guys, we need sales. I need you to get the sales. We need to have sales. God, I've been hearing that one lately. Sales, sales, sales. You know, these sorts of things, or the phone ringing at work, or the phone ringing at home. These things are background stresses, but they do stress us, and they, they build up, and they can quite often bite us in the bum without us realizing. And then you have things like acute stress. So this is the crisis. And actually, generally, that is because of and leads to poor sleep. Things like poor sleep will continuously cause you to react in a crisis manner to something that might not actually be that bad. So there are different stages. There's anticipatory, which is the anticipation of the up and coming task. It can also be known as excitement and thrill. These are very relevant, very real, but it's actually a stress, right? I'm leaving in the morning at 3 a.m. to go to Bali for crying out loud. I'm a little bit stressed anticipatory then we have resilience building and ideally rest and recovery can um after this um things like endurance um when you're at the stage of persistent uh when sorry we are in this stage of persistently um being under stress so this is resilience building like a a, a marathon runner or a, a cyclist or someone who's got a baby newborn and you are in the marathon of looking after your newborn this is life but extreme um, stress in these situations can lead to higher heart rate, anxiety, brain fog, digestive issues, weight gain, muscle loss, high blood sugar levels, um, lower immunity, impatient sleep disturbance, high blood pressure, uh, lower energy, emotional um, volatility at home. And we really want to prevent this because work is meant to be work and our, our stress in our life is always going to be there. But we want to make sure that we can start to really face these things. So that when you're spending time at home and with loved ones, you aren't letting that be negatively affected by the work and the stress that's going on around us. Because this impacts your quality of life in that time. Often after completing our day at work, we carry these emotions and experiences and this black blanket home with us into our private lives where we then interact with our loved ones that quite often we don't even have enough in reserve to give them everything that they require because they miss you. They love you. They want to see you, be with you, hear you, touch you, feel you, all these things. This can really result in weekends and night times um, if we are in total fatigue and we are allowing the resilience um, stress, we can, this can lead to our weekends being kind of wasted, you know, because you're, you're then needing to go into recovery from work or from all the stress and our loved ones are not going to receive the best of us, nor they're going to get the fun or the, the happy version of you. Then we have the third stage, which is exhaustion and disease. This leads to depression and chronic fatigue. And uh, guys, I know a lot, a lot of people have got someone in their life that has been in this situation. If stressed is what your body needs, sorry, if stressed, what your body needs right now is to get back to your biological safety. Come back to the tools within this program. Come back to the tools that we've gone through. Come back and understand what is your number one priority? What is your number two priority? How is that in your lifestyle? Are you honoring it? Are you perceiving and, uh, sorry, are you persistently um, cleaning out, decluttering and, and being aware of what's going on in your environment or are you sitting in a state of reactivity? It is your responsibility to come back to these things and clean it out. Make sure you're doing your due diligence for yourself and for those that you love. Things that affect your biology and safety is what you do. So the food you're choosing, the exercise you're doing, the work you're doing, your social life and what that actually does for the rest of your life. Then it's when you do it. 
So different times to do different things that will have an impact on your body is different for each and every one of you. Knowing that you now have these awesome little wheels inside of your profile that are your chronobiology wheels will help you to really map out your lifestyle and understand what needs to go where in your life so that it doesn't stress you out so much and that your body, your bio biology is ready to receive that stimuli and do the most with that stimuli. Um, who you do it with can be, people can be stressful, right? When you understand people more, when you understand yourself more, you'll be more effective at managing and enjoying people even when who you may have with you has a little tension. So finding strengths in why there is tension, like why are you reacting to them? So a sensor with a connector, the sensor is going to go, right, this person is volatile. This person is high energy. They're going to shift and change. They're going to be sporadic and erratic. And I know that in that moment, I just need to be a little bit more present with them and know that they're not going to be linear. Um, I can give myself a bit of connector time and know that I can then go back to the safety structure, security and quietness of my own surroundings. But in this moment, I understand that I'm walking into a stressful situation because this person is a connector and it's not my biology, but I can be ready for it and anticipate the reaction and the um, energy it's going to take and be okay with that because this person is a friend, a child, uh, a, uh, a family member. And I know that they require this time with me, but I can make sure I have that in reserve and I am anticipating that stress and know that what I'm going to need afterward to rebalance myself. So what causes stress for each of the health types? Let's get a little bit more of an understanding of each of the different groups. So activators, monotony, suppression of emotions will cause stress. They need to immediately cathart the emotions and then they'll feel better. So they'll blurt out some conversation or they'll punch something or they'll be really aggressive and then they've, they're done with it, right? They've expressed it, they've been heard or they've been able to get it out and then they're fine. Monotony may cause stress in them and cause them to cathart the negative emotions. So this can be done in a negative ways. It's not always done in an appropriate way. So they might lash out and call someone a effing idiot. Not constructive, but it's what they're feeling in the moment. When we can understand that the monotony and suppression of their emotions is potentially going to cause this kind of an outburst, we can pay attention to these people um, and give them op opportunities to express themselves in the moment and keep chopping and changing or shifting their energy or shifting their movements so that they don't get to this bubble over phase and explode in a negative way. They might just be like, cool, look, you're running around the office. I'll be back in a minute. And they'll run to the water machine and then they'll come back again and they're all fine. They're back with you. These guys will also say yes to everything and generally they'll end up burning out. They will be okay with last minute tasks like the element of surprise because it's exciting, it's a challenge and they might say yes too much but they love that challenge and they love rising to any occasions and seeing what they can push themselves to do. Guardians. <clears throat> when, um, oh yeah, so when, when don't we have people to connect and also oh, when they don't have people to connect with, this will stress them due to isolation. Guardians who choose isolation are purely sitting in a consistent state of stress. When I find a guardian who is not connecting, helping, nurturing, loving other people, I am worried. It means that they are blocking off their natural biology. They are, what I would say, is cock blocking themselves and sitting in misery. And this is not healthy. This is not good. And it's going to get them nowhere fast. Um, they will always want to reserve about 10% so that doesn't cause any stress. So you'll never get 100% out of a guardian. So just know that. Know that they naturally need that to feel safe. Crusaders. Crusaders need a big vision. They need something to drive through, something to strive for. They need a strategy. They are motivated by achievements and data. Efficiency is, uh, sorry, inefficiency is stress. Lack of clarity, lack of defined goals will equally, uh, will equal no motivation, will equal purposelessness and they they hate pointless chit chat diplomats if they get something wrong they and they don't get a serotonin hit this will cause depression and they will affect their motivation it is safe to consider uh, sorry it is their safety so they must consider um, all options first before they make a decision to make sure they're making the right decision getting things wrong and making mistakes will cause them stress and so they will need to make sure that getting uh, frequent perceived wins will be a big one. This is why you'll hear a lot of diplomats speak what they're doing, speak it out loud, and you'll be like, why are you telling me this? 
and they probably just need a little bit of a nod or a little bit of reassurance that they're on the right path and they will be back into it and they'll be fine. Sometimes they just need that little bit of reassurance. Um, diplomats do not like surprises or problems to deal with if given short notice. Generally, if you do need to do this, understand that you're probably not going to get the most ideal reaction out of them and they probably just need a little bit of time to slot it into its right spot and be on their way. Um, they don't like things to be out of their control or their timeline and they don't like their timeline to be compressed. They will feel like it's a risky decision and may lead to stubbornness and, stubbornness, and they may just say no because they don't have time. True or not, that'll be their reaction. Connectors. They are into connection and trust. Safety um, is a connect, um, safety is in a connected team, having fun, having variety to keep people interested and connected. They are great at quick problem solving and in the moment um, strategies, responses, all of this. They are. Um, I get stress. I get worried about these guys when they are disconnected. Um, they do not do well with public shame, and it will stress them because it is a total form of disconnection. If you publicly shame a connector, it's like death. So it's really about finding fun, friendly ways of showing them that they're making a poor choice or a poor decision and steer them back in the right direction with a fun, interactive, connected way of um, changing their sales. And boredom will also stress them out. Senses. Anything that will risk their physical health, because they are such fine, delicate beings um, in general, um, anything that will cause them a physical health um uh, deduction uh, will make them unstable and if they feel like they're getting overstimulated it will cause complete overwhelm and stress cold will also produce mental fog which will which will risk their safety rules mean predictable and safe for these guys logical and detail orientated and specifics will give them a reduction in threats which will make them feel much safer and happier to oblige or be involved or be out in the open they need to use their mind as much as possible, but they can get overwhelmed with all the information. So this can lead, and this can lead to gut issues. So these guys really need, oh, what have I done? These guys really need to make sure that they've got, um, blah, 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 blah. these guys need to make sure they've got checklists. These guys love senses, love lists and checklists to know that they're on the right path. So what do we need to reduce stress? I found this one and I couldn't help but laugh. You guys might see me share this on social media. Stress reduction kit. Bang head here. <laughs> Place on a firm surface. Follow directions in the circle of the kit. Repeat step two as necessary or until unconscious. If unconscious, cease stress reduction activity. <laughs> but being serious. Um, stress reduction for each health type is different. So for an activator, to reduce your stress, go move your body. Cathart use the energy, shift the energy. Crusaders, find a mission, find a purpose, find a way to be more on your mission, more directed, more um, on point. Senses, you need order, you need meditation, sometimes stretching and flow meditation, and you really do like your rules. These guys, to reduce the stress in the sensor, give them raw rules and sequential order. Diplomats, they need nature, time in nature. They also need time. They need time and space. They need space and time. Time, space, and nature. All of the above. <laughs> Guardians need nurture. They need to nurture themselves and nurture other people. They need to be connected and valued for the wonderful, incredible beings that they are. Connectors, oh, you've got it. They need connection. They need to be a part of a group, part of a herd, part of a collection of epic humans. Remember, um, connectors can be very, um, uh, what's the word? Connectors via osmosis will become the same as those around them. So please make sure that our connectors are surrounding yourselves, themselves, your friends with uh, good people, good quality people, because sadly they can adapt to the negative things around them far too easily. They can be easily influenced. That's the word I was looking for. So when we do things in the correct time, we end up getting 80% of the results with 20% of the effort. So remember, mesos, people on the left-hand side of the circle, you guys are the early birds. We drew a line straight down the middle. You guys are the early birds. If we had an endomorph, which is the right-hand side of the circle, y'all are night owls. Whoop, whoop, go the night owls. At work or in these stressful situations, people will respond differently in the morning to the afternoon, depending on their physiology. Diplomats are still waking up in the morning, and when the activator is ready to start things in the morning, they're all hyperactive, and the diplomat's telling them to go the heck away and be quiet. This will affect their level engagement and mood. 
things, um, do things consistently and give your body rhythm. Find ways of looking at your chronobiology wheels and finding rhythm. If your week is chaotic and ridiculous like mine can be, go, okay, I know that Tuesday's my time to this, Wednesday's my time to that. And make sure even if every day of the week is different, make sure your weeks are as consistent as you can and put in some structures and some planning and some, um, some flow for yourself that will create a rhythm no matter what happens. Create little morning rituals, whatever it is. Um, there will be better times for us to do things physically. Uh, there'll be better times for our brain activity. And this will create our biology, biological safety and reduce stress if we do things at the optimum time. Love thyself. And then now we can learn to love thy neighbor. So activators, some little... Um, personality snippets activators are direct blunt they need to express they can seem a little angry crusaders are purposeful need to produce need to be efficient senses can seem aloof they are literal they are exact they are just straight to the point diplomats are thoughtful considered stubborn or quiet in conflict guardians can be calm relaxed family-like they love their family around them on purpose is not necessarily important unless it is to do with their family and their tribe. Connect up, social, chatty, and they need to connect. People who are living their biology will be calm and emit a calm frequency, which will influence the people in the workplace and the family home. We have um, a real impact on the people around us and understand that yourself, uh, understand yourself so that you can be calm and have a positive effect on the people around you by osmosis. Those around you will be affected by how you are in your own flow state. Personal identity worksheet. So let's quickly zip away from share screen. Hi. And I'm going to share you guys across to another screen. Oh, maybe that was the right one. <laughs> okay. Personal identity. Here's some homework. I want to know any notes, thoughts, and emotions that came up for you during this presentation. And I want you guys to go through and fill out the personal identity worksheet. Who are you and why are you here? Why are you this human? What's driving you? What's motivating? What's sitting underneath the surface? Are there any parts of you that you have not yet met and fallen in love with and grasped? And is there something on your list that you have that one day I will, maybe I will, if only I could? Let's get these things out of you. So who are you? Why are, what are you most curious or intrigued about in life? List the top 10 things that are most passionate, you are most passionate about in your life. Why do you believe you are here? List five things that have shown up in your life to confirm this. What makes you feel good? Joy, love, fun. Describe your personality when you are in complete flow. And you all have had that when you'd be like, yeah, I just did the most amazing day and everything happened and blah, 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 blah. What, um, do you know why you are here on this planet? Describe yourself. As if you are Oprah on stage right now. Describe yourself. Who do you want to be? What would you want to change or shift in your life if you could? Is what you want to be aligned and with your, is what you want actually aligned with your purpose? Are there any limitations or things holding you back from this? Are you ready to change? Be honest with yourself, guys. There's no lying on this. This is only, this is just reflection of just answer these questions as honest as you can. And in the moment, try not to think too much into it. Just answer it and then come back and reflect on it later. Answer each and every section as well as you can. How committed are you to creating change in you? Who will you become? Now that you are aware, who will you choose to be? Describe who you are in 10 years from now, including the three biggest achievements. Achievements. Describe who you are in one year from now, including three pieces of advice for yourself from future you. Describe yourself in 12 weeks, including your why, uh, including why you matter and what you are capable of and how committed you are to impacting the world as the epic human as you are. And this might just be, I just want to raise my children the best I can, lose some weight and feel better. Whatever it is for you, go as big or as little as you like. Confirming your identity. Now that you've unpacked all the pieces of who you are, and what you're wanting. It's time to rebuild and collate the strong identity in your mind. Complete the following questions to help you facilitate this process. Describe your personal identity. Combing your personality, uh, combining your, pers your blah, 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 personality, your passion and your purpose. List three people whose energy you clearly identify with. Is it Oprah? Is it um, Nigella Lawson? Is it 
Jamie, oh, I'm, not, I'm listening off online, aren't I? <laughs> Who is it? So for me, it would be Oprah Winfrey. It would be uh, Nigella Lawson. Mine would be Jamie Oliver. Um, and I would also be, um, another one. Who was it last time? I've got another one in there that's a little bit more. Write a paragraph, a bio of how you would want people to announce who you are. So say you're getting on stage and someone's announcing the human that you are after you've gone through all of this. Write a one sentence description, a punchline, like an elevator pitch of who you are in the world and then share it into the group. This is a homework that you must see. I must see this. This is a must, 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 must this week. I want you to finish this. I don't care if it takes you two weeks, guys. Go for it. You've got two weeks generally with each of these product projects anyway. I want to know what is your identity. I love you all so much. You are incredible humans. I know there's a fair bit in this one. Um, and a summary. What were the wins? What were the, what were the notices? What were the awarenesses? We've gone through stress management and the personal identity worksheet. I cannot wait. And also with this picture, it just reminds me to remember your thoughts will affect the thoughts around you of those, of those around you. And that will go on to affect those around them. What are you contributing to this world? Who are you showing up as? What are you choosing for yourself and those that you love and those that you come into contact with? You are the key element here and it is your choice. I love you all immensely. And I see absolutely incredible human potential in each and every one of you. And I I'm so grateful to see you here. Please, please, please share this with the group. I think this will be a massive one and I just cannot wait to see.